G'day, Lockie here. So I've been playing with Kubernetes 1.7 for the last few days, and I thought it might be interesting if I just throw together some of the top features and show you how they work. Now I'm gonna kick it off today with uh, API aggregation, but before I get into the nuts and bolts about how it works, let me just uh, give you a brief overview of why you might want to use API aggregation, because it's not for everyone and not needed. As you all know, when you set up a Kubernetes cluster, you have a default API server, which is one of the binaries that runs on your cluster. Um, one of the things folks may want to do is define new resource types. So we have the resource types that Kubernetes ships with. That's things like deployments, services, secrets. But let's say as a user or as an operator, I want to create new resource types. One of the ways we can achieve that it was, is with API aggregation. Now the benefit of API aggregation is um, that you don't have to actually check this code into Kubernetes core or for Kubernetes. Um, API aggregation gives you a way that you can say, this API server will be servicing these new resource types. So it's very flexible and it's a great way to extend Kubernetes. Now, um, in the vein of keeping short videos, uh, I, I stress that this might be a lot of information, but I, I hope I can keep it simple. Um, and concise. Now what I'd like to do today is you can see the page up here there's great documentation on this and in the documentation it actually mentions the service catalog so uh, a lot of this is um, that I'm showing today in the demo is done via the great work of one of my colleagues and esteemed friends um, Aaron Schlesinger. He showed me this demo and I thought I could uh, just reenact it for everybody on this um, on YouTube so uh, let's see how I go. Now, one of the things we do with API um, aggregation is we start up a new API server. So um, there's a great repository about building another API server, but what this API server is, it's much the same as the default one that ships. You could point kubectl at it, it's Kubernetes compliant, um, but what you're doing is you're going to use the default API server as a proxy. So in 1.7, there is an aggregation layer um, that's doing nothing out of the box until you register resources and say for these um, for these resources go to this path and that is another API server. So today we're going to go through the service catalog example. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole example, just a piece of it to illustrate API aggregation. Um, but before we get into it, let's just pop over to my terminal and see what we've got here. So I have, I'm using Minikube, hats off to the Minikube folks, that's great. A 1.7 cluster up and running with nothing on it. Um, you need 1.7 because API aggregation is um, available in 1.7. So from the service catalog team in the Kubernetes incubator org is actually a chart. And this Helm chart installs um, service catalog and you can configure it as uh, to be installed as an extension API server. So what this is actually going to do is tell the Kubernetes API to proxy all the requests and forward through any requests of these new resource types over to this API server uh, that's running as a pod um, inside Kubernetes. So let's go ahead and, and do that. Um, I think I have an install here. So I'm running an install and it doesn't work because I have a new cluster. Let me just do a helm init. Okay, so there's a, a bunch of things that you actually have to do. This Helm chart is wrapping a lot of them. We're setting up mutual T TLS, so I've used CS, uh, CFSSL sorry, uh, to create some keys, and then we're configuring um, mutual TLS bet between the uh, inbuilt API server to the um, aggregation API server that's running as an extension to service the catalog. Um, so once Helm is up, I should be able to do a, an install here. Okay, Helm list. Okay, and we'll go back to the command that I was trying to run. So you can install um, catalog. Now this is all open source, so you can get your hands on it. But you can see here a few things. Here's the API server cert. Um, there's a service for the catalog API server. There's a controller manager and an API server. So this is actually um, the API server that the serverless catalog team have written and an associated controller manager. Now, as you may know, 
if you want any of these resources to be enacted on, the control loops for these new resources could be placed in the controller manager. So we're shipping one with it. Now there's a new service type here um, called API service. So now we could actually go versions and we should see that we have service catalog .io, which is not uh, a default one that ships with Kubernetes. So we've actually defined cube cattle API service. We could do a get on them. We should see uh, that service catalog is here. And now we'll take a look at that and see what it says. Okay, so there's a bunch of options in here. It, it, it's actually going to say, please go to this service called catalog-catalog-api server which is the service that the Helm chart created, which points to the API server. I've got some certs here as well, um, and this is to get trust between the API server and the extension API server. Um, so that's all been configured as part of that Helm chart, which is great, it makes it nice and easy. Okay, so you can see we've created a new API at version so service catalog .io, v1 alpha 1. Now, service catalog specifically is creating four new resource types which do not ship out of the bro uh, box. They are broker, service, class, instance, and binding. So I should be able actually to go and get, um, let's have a look, broker, which is not a default uh, resource type. But this resource type is being serviced by that extension API server. So broker uh, service class, if I can spell, uh, instance. Now this may not make too much sense to you. It's part of this service catalog operation. These are four new resource types that service catalog uses um, and, the, and the brokers actually need to enact on. But for today, the purposes today, we can see, get pods, and I put it in the catalog namespace, that we've run up an API server as a pod. This is going to serve as, uh, serve as an extension API. We've told Kubernetes the default API through this API service registration that anything under service v1 alpha 1.service catalog.cage.io go over to this service catalog dash catalog.server in the namespace catalog here's the versions so it's going to actually the aggregation layer is going to proxy this request and shoot it over to um, that extension api server that is running as a pod in kubernetes um, for fulfillment now there is also also something to take take note of here. Get pods um, is there's actually two um, containers running in this pod. So when you run an additional API server, you actually need an additional system of record, which, as you know, is by default etcd. You're not bound to that um, because the API service area is all this is connecting to. But we're actually shipping another etcd um, container in here that this. API server, this extension API server, is storing its state in. So that's kind of a high level of why you might want to do this. New resources, you have more granular control about checking schemas than you would with something like uh, third-party resources or um, custom resource definitions in 1.7, which we'll go over later. Um, you have the ability to actually make new API servers outside the core code base and just register them. Um, we've seen this in the past with things like running multiple schedulers um, in Kubernetes. Now we can run multiple API servers and there is a, pro a proxy sitting in the default API server that's going to broker um, those requests and proxy them through to the extension APIs. That's all I had for today. The documentation is pretty good and I'll post links to where I recreated this demo with some basic steps in the hope that you can run this up yourself. Um, that was all I had for today. Um, I hope it was beneficial, and I hope you enjoy using uh, API aggregation in Kubernetes 1.7. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.